Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course, and in this module we're going to be looking at the Infographic Designer. Now the Infographic Designer is a really cool way to make your reports tell a story. Now, you're probably very familiar with infographics, you see them all the time in things like news magazines. Well now you can actually make infographics yourself with inside of Power BI, and they give you the ability to really customize the appearance of your reports to be uh, surrounding the specific topic area that you're focused on. So in this case, on the screenshot you see on the right-hand side, we're talking about wine production and wine sales. Well, we were actually able to take a wine bottle and place that on our bar chart. You actually have the ability to do both bar charts, line charts, and column charts and replace the items inside of those charts with images or shapes or even words if you wanted to. So you can actually see there's different layers that you can add on top of the infographic. You're provided a list of graphics that you can use, or you can actually import your own. And so I'm going to show you how to do either option, where you can actually use the provided default graphics, or how you can go import specific shape files that you've either had designed, or that you've bought somewhere, or maybe you've gotten uh, downloaded for free even. So you're, uh, in addition to being able to import those graphics and those shape files, you can also decide whether or not you want to be able to view one large image or shape, or do you want to see multiples of it? In this case, on the right-hand side, you're actually viewing an infographic that's showing multiple wine bottles, but you could have alternatively actually had one large wine bottle and then had it do something like a fill percent, where it actually filled a percentage of that wine bottle based on how many sales that you've had. So there's some interesting ways you can play around with the images that you use on your infographic field designer. Uh, you also have the ability to add multiple layers. So in this case, you're actually viewing one that has at least two layers on the right-hand side, probably three layers. The layers that you see on the right-hand side can be where you actually have a shape or an image. You can also have a text as a uh, layer, and you can have multiples of those layers. So you could have two images on top of each other, or you could have two images that are next to each other, just depending on how you set up the layout section of the infographic designer. This one's developed by Microsoft. Let's go ahead and walk you through where to go get it, and then how to use the infographic designer. All right, so our first step is going to be to go to the Office Store. So if you go to store.office.com and do a quick search here, or you can click on Power BI down here as well. If I click on Power BI, you'll be able to search now more easily for the infographic. So if I type infographic up top here, you'll find the infographic designer rather quickly. So I'll go ahead and select the infographic designer. Tell it that I want to add, and by the way, there are some videos and some still images here that show you how this works. But I'm going to go ahead and click Add to bring this infographic designer, download it here, and bring it into my own instance of the Power BI desktop. You can also download a sample they have. They have quite a few samples in that example. If you go to download that, you can take a look at some interesting ways to use the infographic designer. But in our case, we're actually going to use our own data, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, download the infographic designer, which I've already done, but you would do that now here as well. Once that's downloaded, you're going to work your way back over to the Power BI desktop. So once I flip over and open up my Power BI desktop, I can start to work with my own data. Now, in this case, I'm going to be looking at some social media data. And I want to see the monthly usage of different social media platforms, but I want to visualize it in a more interesting way using the infographic designer. To get started, though, we need to, of course, bring in our data. So I'm going to go up to the Get Data section up top here, and we're going to be pulling in data from Excel. So I'll select Excel. And the data we're going to be pulling in is going to be called social media users. And then I made one specifically here for infographics. So I'll select open here. And I'm going to go ahead and select the monthly active users as the data set that we want to use or the spreadsheet we want to use. And I'll click load. Once we've loaded this data now into the Power BI desktop, it's working on bringing that into the model. We can now be able to visualize that within any of the standard visuals here. Or we can import a custom visual by selecting import from file in the visualization section here. We'll select to import a custom visual and go ahead and hit import again. And then go find wherever you downloaded your version of the custom visual. In my case, I downloaded it under this folder here called custom visuals. I, I do recommend kind of placing these all in one place if you do have multiple so it's really easy to find. So we're going to use the infographic designer. I'll click open and hit OK again. And then the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and bring in that infographic designer. So I'll select it, bring that into my design surface. I'm going to make it a little bit larger so it's easier to see what we're doing, at least for this first example. In fact, I'm going to make it take up the entirety of the screen, but we will shrink it back down towards the end. You can see here that you can have a category, a measure, you can have a column by property or a row by property. And basically, this is for actually dealing with having multiples of a chart. So if you wanted to have one infographic but have multiple versions of it based on different uh, categories of data, you can do that by dropping in different fields in the row by or column by sections. We're really just going to work on the category and measure section here. So I'm going to select name to drop into the category section. 
an active user to drop into the measure section. And so you, what you can see here is we're bringing in the active number of monthly Facebook users, LinkedIn users, Twitter users, and YouTube users. So what we're gonna do with this though is we wanna make this a little bit more interesting. Rather than just seeing this as plain old column charts, we have a couple different options of how we can view this. You can actually uh, go underneath the format paintbrush here and you'll find underneath the chart section that you can toggle this between different types of charts. So right now it's a column chart, but we can make it a bar chart. You can make it a line chart if you wanted to, and you can really play around with it a lot if you wanted to. But let's, let's leave it as a column chart for now. Just wanted to show you the fact you can change the type of charts there. And you'll also notice the fact that underneath the format paintbrush section, there's really not a ton you can do to format it or to make adjustments to it. And the reason that is is because all the formatting is generally going to be done underneath the chart itself. On the chart itself, you'll see there's this little pencil icon here called Edit Mark. And if you click on that, that'll give you really the true editor for the infographic designer. Now, what we'd like to do to start off with is I want to change these columns inside the column chart to a different way of visualizing the data. Right now, it's just basically a rectangle. Underneath the shape section here, though, we can change it from a rectangle to something else. So if we're looking at active users, maybe I want to make it into something like a user icon here. So to do that, you can come over here underneath the format section and find shape, and I can hit the down arrow, and I can change this to all sorts of different shapes that are made available to me. There's a lot of different shapes available. And the one that I want in this case is going to be this one that kind of looks like this contact or user icon here. So I'll select the user icon. And you can see that now brings that into our chart and it replaces the, the kind of traditional rectangle in the column chart to a user. Now you can also do things like change the color of this if I wanted to. I can come in here and make this maybe more of a tradition, maybe a blue of some kind and I can hit apply on that. That looks a little bit different, a little better. I could also do something like this. Maybe I wanted to actually see the chart show a percent of fill. So I actually want to show kind of a, a partially filled user logo here, a user icon here. And you can do that with this fill percent right now, which is set to none. If we change that from none to active users, it'll actually fill a percentage of the person here, the user, with the data that we have. Now, if you're going to do a fill chart, you really want to change the way this is visualized. Because this is showing a fill by percent, you really don't need to also stretch the user icon here. You really don't want to stretch it at all. You want all these to be at the top and then the fill percent to show just the percentage that's being filled here. So. To fix this little issue here, what you would do is you would go underneath the layout section, and rather than it being bound to inner, you would change it bound to outer, and you'll notice then it actually changes that to a really 100% chart that's filled to a percent of the total number of users. So that's a little bit better way of visualizing this in here. All right, some other things that we can do in here, though, is we can add some text. Maybe perhaps we wanted to add some text next to each of these to say the name of the platform. So I wanted to add some text next to it that said YouTube. Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook, we can add some text in here. We can add multiple layers. Before we add in another layer though, I wanna give it a little bit of padding here so that we can actually see this a little bit better. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here on the right-hand side and I'm gonna change this to add really kinda of like 40 points of padding here. I'm giving a little bit of extra cushion here on the right-hand side. And you can see that visualized here on the design surface as well to let you know that you've added that padding in. Then if we wanted to add another layer on top of this, I can come up to the very top here where it says uh, you can add a shape layer, you can insert a text layer, or you can insert an image. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert a text layer here. And so when I insert the text layer, I can go underneath the format section, back on the format side, and I can tell how do I want this text to actually appear. Likely what I wanna have is not just the word text showing up here, I probably wanna bind this to the data we actually have. And so if you want to bind the, the values that you have to your data, you can see there's this little uh, kind of link button right here that's unlinked. And you can see that it says data binding is turned off. But if we click on that, we can turn data binding on by selecting that we want this data binding field to be set to the name of the platform, the name being Twitter or Facebook or whatever. I'll then hit apply and that'll actually show those values next to the chart. And I'll hit back to make it where we can actually go back and format this a little bit better. So what I'd like to do next is let's, let's apply some basic formatting to this. Let's go ahead and make it so that we can see this a little bit better. Let's make it maybe 17 point font. Let's also do something like maybe make it bold so we can change the font weight to bold here or bolder, either one is fine. And then what we wanna do is actually make it so that we can change the layout so we can see that text a little bit better. Right now it's a little bit difficult to see. So what we can do is we can go back over to the layout section. This is really where you can kind of adjust where that value is being seen on the screen. You're really controlling what you see here in the top area. So what I want to do in this case is I want to go to the top section right here and rather than doing this off of a percent, let's say that we want to move this to negative 30, hit OK, 
and you'll notice it actually kind of bumps it up above the standard value section that we had available to us. And you can see, you know, maybe that's a good spot for it. You might want to adjust it a little bit down. Maybe we do negative 25 or something like that. Hit OK. You can see it kind of shifts it down a little bit more. And tell you what, I'm going to knock it down to negative 20 just so it lines up a little bit better on top of the line. I was kind of looking at the Facebook one here. It was a little bit high. But that's kind of nice. You can see now the text of what those values actually are, what the categories are now shown inside of the field. Now, I don't know about you, but any infographic I've ever seen does not actually have lines on it typically. Usually you don't see X and Y axes with a line going through it. So what you may want to do is after you select your infographic, go back over to the format paintbrush, and you may want to do some things like maybe turn off the title here. I'm going to turn off the title so we don't see that in the top. You may want to go underneath the chart section here and actually turn off the grid line. You can turn off the grid line if you wanted to, like so. And if you wanted to just get rid of the X and Y axis altogether, you can turn those off by selecting off on X and Y axis. To get rid of the little mark designer here, this edit section where the pencil was, you can just hit X on that. And then I want to shift this and make it a little bit smaller, maybe make it a little bit more proportional. And now anything else that I have inside of my report, I can interact with just by simply clicking on the values I have here. It would do cross filtering on other report items that I have. All right. So that's nice. That looks pretty good. Now, uh, what else do I want to do here? The other thing I'd like to do is I want to show you another way that we can also use the infographic designer. So I'm going to bring in one more infographic designer here, and I'm going to make this take up the other part of the screen we have. And again, I'm going to bring in the name and the active users in here. So the same fields that we had in the last one we're going to have here again. And what I'd like to do is in this case, rather than seeing this as a, uh, oh, and I have it filtered. Let me unfilter that. There we go. Rather than seeing this as a, a column chart this time, I want to see this as a bar chart. So I'm going to go underneath the format paintbrush, go underneath the chart options, and I'm going to flip this from column to bar. Okay, so it kind of flips the orientation there. And then I'm going to go underneath the format paintbrush, or really, excuse me, not the format paintbrush, the edit mark icon here. So you go underneath the mark designer. And you'll notice whenever your charts are a little bit smaller on the screen, it's kind of difficult to work with this. So you might need to hit this focus mode to really fully see everything that you have to do in the editor. All right, so in this case, what I want to do is something a little bit different. I actually want to see the Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube logos on here as part of the chart. Okay, and then what I'd like to do is I'm going to duplicate the logos over and over to fill the chart area inside of the designer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath the section here where we can bind the shape. Remember last time we went underneath this shape section and we told it we wanted to switch it to the user or the contact icon here? Well, you can also actually go upload your own shape files. And so I have a couple shape files here that, of course, I'll share with you, but I'm going to go ahead and click underneath Upload, and I'm going to go find these shape files that I've downloaded. I have one for Facebook right there. I'm going to go to my next one. I have one for LinkedIn right there. I'm going to go Upload again. I have one for Twitter right there, and then I have one finally for YouTube. And I've added now in those four different icons that I can use to actually show on my, my infographic. All right, so the first one here that I'd like to do is I want to make it so not necessarily that all of them show the same logo. I don't want them all to be Facebook because if I click on this, they all show Facebook. That's not really what I want. But instead, I want to be able to bind each of these to their specific logo. So let me undo that. I'll control uh, Z to undo that, or I can just go back in here and select the bar again. But actually, what I'd like to do instead is I want to change the binding so that it's based off of the data. I don't want to just have the Facebook logo show over and over. I actually want to go underneath the binding right next to the shape here and turn on binding and tell it that I want to bind based on the name. It's going to then show me each of the items here that I can bind. And I can see Facebook is already correct. But then I'm going to bind LinkedIn to my LinkedIn logo. I'm going to bind Twitter to my Twitter logo and YouTube to my YouTube logo. Once you hit apply, you'll see those instantly change and you can see them show up here look good. But you can see the logos are really stretched out, look kind of odd. So if we take a step back here, we can change this here to instead of just showing one large Facebook logo, we can put multiple units on and it'll actually show the logo over and over for that bar. The other thing that we can do here as well is we can also customize the colors. So right now the colors are all showing the same, but maybe I want to see those colors show differently. And so what I can do is if I scroll down a little bit here, you can see the value color shows right here. You can certainly change the value color to whatever you want. If you want it to be a specific color, you can do that here. Or if you go underneath the data binding section again, so I can turn on data binding for color, I can turn on data binding based on the name. And then if I hit apply, you'll see that it shows different colors for each. But maybe I want to use specific colors. Maybe I actually want to use the specific colors that are used for Facebook, for LinkedIn, for Twitter, and for YouTube. And so what I did is I went and I looked up the hex 
numbers for those different colors. That's basically the HTML color for each of the logos they have. And so what I can do is I can actually hit the down arrow here on Facebook, for example, and overwrite the color that's used here with the color that's traditionally used for Facebook and hit OK. Hit Apply and you'll see that change show up here. I can then go down to the LinkedIn one. Let me go uh, select LinkedIn this time, paste in my LinkedIn color, hit Apply, you'll see that show up. And then these last two, I do Twitter, I'll do these a little bit faster. Twitter looks like that. And I'll hit uh, Apply here in a second. And then YouTube should look like this one. And so if I hit Apply on those new changes that I've made, you'll see the logos now change and appear how you would traditionally be used to seeing them. Okay. So let's do some cleanup on this. Just like we did last time, I'm going to go ahead and add in also a, a text value because I really want to be able to see this because I'm also going to eliminate the X and Y axes again. So underneath the format paintbrush, remember how I did this a moment ago? Underneath chart, I can kill the X and Y axes. And so now it just looks like a bunch of logos. And so what I probably want to do is put some kind of text here next to it that maybe shows me what those values are. And so what I can do for that is I'm going to go back over to where we did earlier, where we added and inserted a text value. And so I'm going to insert text here. And in this new text value that we just inserted, I'm going to change the text instead of it just saying the word text, which by the way, it's kind of in the top right here. We're going to work on that a little bit here in a moment. We can do things like right align it if we wanted to, so I can right align it. Uh, we can do some other things to play around with that. Uh, but let's start by writing aligning it. And I'm also going to bind in some data to that rather than just showing the hard coded text. I'm going to go underneath the data binding option for text. And we're going to change this not to show the name, but to show the number here of active users. You can also do some rounding here if you wanted to, but I'm just going to leave that alone and hit apply. All right, so we can see the number of users showing up here, but it's really kind of overlapping on top of some of the things that we have here. So we need to go over to the layout section to really handle that. All right, so from the layout section here, we can kind of play around again where this is shifted on the canvas that we see here. So if we wanted to, we can kind of uh, go on the right hand side. Maybe we want to change this to, again, move kind of a negative amount backwards. We can move negative, let's do negative, negative 40, maybe perhaps to test it out. And you can kind of see as you shift it back, it moves that value and it kind of shifts it off of the section that we were on. You can see that actually shows within side of the design surface on the top. So then maybe we did that a little bit too much, but I'm going to leave that as is. Go back underneath the format section and let's bump up the text size again of that to maybe 17 point font. And we'll also make that bold as well so we can see that really well. All right, now you can see there, maybe bold is not a good choice because it kind of overlaps there a little bit. That works a little bit better. All right, so I can hit close on this. Now you can see if I uh, go ahead and minimize this again, we can now again interact very easily with either of these values. So I can select on the top values or the low, lower values and cross filtering applies both ways. We can do cross filtering between each of them or we can do cross filtering between other visuals that we bring into our report as well. So if we had brought in something like a simple table that showed us the names and the users and we wanted to make some kind of cross filtering across those values, you could certainly do that as well. I can come over here and actually make it so that we can see this a little bit larger. It's a little bit low text there. Bump up the text size a little bit and then as I do things like select YouTube or Twitter, you can see those values filtered across any other reporting items that we have. All right, I'm going to go ahead and kill that. Want to really focus in on the infographics for this example. Hope you guys enjoy this one. This is really one of the fun visuals that you have available. And there's again, there's more things you can do. We could have, of course, gone with something like a line chart in here. We could have had a lot of fun with the different types of ways that we could show this data. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module. Thanks a lot.